I think that this one is intriguing as well. We're going to stay out there in the AFC as with the Baltimore Ravens. I thought that it was so interesting what they did last season because every game that Lamar Jackson was out there on the field, they had a fourth quarter lead. And typically when you have a fourth quarter lead, that means that, you know, we'll put it into cruise control. You're going to be working the ground game. And I believe that you're taking a look at J.K. Dobbins to have a nice season as well with some of the props that you're looking at for the season. Yeah, you can tell I love taking former Buckeyes. And <laughs> J.K. Dobbins making his return. It's the last year of his rookie contract. He's going to want to come out with a, a big number. And he's going to want to get guaranteed money from this. There was also released today that they're in conversations with his contract now because he has been sitting out of practice. Questions around whether it was a re-aggravation of his knee. But... It, it sounds like it's just the the running back holdout that is the the hold up there. So I think that they're going to get past that. He's going to have a big season in his final year of his rookie contract to get that guaranteed money. I've seen him beat Eddie George's rushing record in a single season at Ohio State, ran over 2,000 yards his junior year. We saw how he was through eight games. He was averaging 5.7 yards per carry, very efficient. But he wasn't getting the ball as much. As we know, he there were some concerns with Greg Roman why he wasn't getting the ball as much there. And even John Harrell commented on it in post-game press conferences. He didn't know why Dobbins wasn't getting the ball as much. I don't think that's going to be a concern with Todd Munkin. We know the Ravens love to run the ball. They ran the ball over 30 times per game. That was seventh in the NFL. That's not going to change once Dobbins gets back in. I think it's going to increase. He's going to get more carries. I think he's really going to light it up now that he's back to healthy, and he's got a chip on his shoulder. I love betting on him with a chip on his shoulder, and I know J.K. Dobbins pretty well, and if they're talking a lot about Jonathan Taylor, that is enough fuel <laughs> to get him going. Yep, and I alluded to it as well. If the Ravens continue that trend of always having that fourth quarter lead, that means that they are going to be feeding him the ball late in games as well, so I do think that that provides a little bit of added value, and Stephanie, I know that you've got some ties to Ohio State, so I'll give you this question as well, because as we know, there's going to be two rookie quarterbacks that are highly touted that we know are going to start. The Anthony Richardson situation, that is TBD, and personally, I don't think that we're going to see much good come from the Indianapolis Colts this season, but I know you were able to cover quite a bit of C.J. Stroud. What are your expectations for him this rookie year? Because I thought of all the quarterbacks coming out, he was the most pro-ready, and the way I look at this Texans team is that they're probably going to lose a lot of games, but I could see them being that really pesky team that sort of covers a lot of spreads when they're north of a touchdown underdog. I mean, I hate to say this, especially because of the saying about Buckeye quarterbacks in the NFL. They're always a flop. This is the one where I do get a little bit concerned. I've seen C.J. Stroud get get up in his nerves when he's in the pocket, but he showed up in that Georgia game in, in the Peach Bowl. But I think back to the Michigan game in the horseshoe, familiar territory, I'm not sure what happened. They just didn't execute. And I think that when it comes to the big stage, I am nervous that he's not necessarily ready for it. That will come with reps. But to start him this early with one of the worst teams in the NFL, I do have concerns with how ready he'll be or how he can command this offense right out of the gate just because of the nerves he got. And I know that the, the team had, had some issues in the weight room and things like that. There weren't so much confidence in his ability to perform in moments like that. But – that all did go away in that Georgia game. But I always say that if they didn't lose to Michigan the way they did at the horseshoe on home base, I don't know if they would have played like that against Georgia. So taking that into consideration, I think he's got to be juiced. He can show up when he has to, but showing up every single Sunday in the NFL, I do think there will be a welcome to the NFL moment. I think it's a significant jump from Big Ten play. Oh, absolutely. We have seen many rookie quarterbacks struggle, but he is going to have Damian Pierce at his disposal. That should be able to help him out, just like Stephanie. You helped us out by joining us in studio. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. Love being here in Vegas. Thanks for having me in studio. It's been great.